Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Jeremy Siskin. Uh, you might have heard I just came out with a new album called Songs of Rebirth, and I did something a little bit weird, which is that I put out a book with all the music, um, including some transcriptions of me uh, soloing. So I thought what would be fun today, I haven't really looked through these transcriptions yet or thought about them because it's a little bit daunting, but what I want to do is see if I can look at one of them with you all and try to explain some of the things that are going on in this transcription. So uh, this is going to take just a little bit of technical wizardry, but we can do it. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you the tune first. Uh, this is called Drinking Song. And this will give you a little bit of context for the transcription that you're about to hear. OK, so here we go. We're going to listen to it all the way through first. And then I'm going to go and try my best to explain some portion of it to you. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is my original tune from Songs of Rebirth called Drinking Song. I never had a taste for cold humanity. People are so stuffy. They're always working at a job all day. Waiting for the week. It yanks you out of your body And that's shoddy day to day Every low life gets a chance at a new life When toasting to life, living fades away Aviator gin can make a sad man soar Up among the bar fly. So leave your worldly troubles at the tavern door Stuff can't touch you anymore. One more pour. say that you know this style owes a huge debt to Fred Hurst. Um, Fred Hurst is the guy who's playing these single line melodies, playing all these different um, types of rhythmic languages within one thing, changing up the articulation. Um, so basically everything that you hear um, in a tune like this, uh, you know, it's really starting with Fred Hurst. You see there's not really a lot of chords through these first four measures, right? It's just the left hand's playing a line, the right hand's playing a line. Sometimes they're playing together, Sometimes they're not. One of the things that, you know, I was thinking about consciously or subconsciously was having a lot of different rhythmic units. So you could see right in these first few measures that we have eighth notes, Bow, do, these are swaps. 
long eighth notes, and then we have these sixteenth passages, and those are implying straight eighth notes. Da ba da da ba da da ba 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 da ba da. Of course, we have our five couplets here. That's something that I've practiced. Um, I'm been interested in five couplets, so I spent some time practicing it, and then we get into a very long C of triplets. So everything is in a slightly different rhythmic unit. Um, and this kind of goes well with the you know, feeling of drunkenness, uh, right? This is called drink, drinking song. So um, we want to have this sort of imbalance, this push and pull. Um, and these chords are really hard to play over. In a sense, they're, you know, it's just it going through the circle of fifths and dominance, but they're moving really fast. And sometimes they're moving in pretty unpredictable ways. And then it like suddenly slams on the brakes, right? For a couple measures here. And so it's no coincidence that this is where the texture really changes, by which I mean, you know, we go, now we're playing triplets all the way through, and it becomes more of a stride left hand. Although, and this is also something I can tell you that I practice, I'm doing not one, some passing stuff and some other stuff in here, but this is mainly octatonic scale. The half whole octatonic starting on D. So, you know, this F sharp is a passing tone, this A natural is a passing tone, but everything else here is kind of octatonic. Um, it's kind of fun having these passages where the left hand is more active than the right hand, right? The right hand is just going, uh, let's see. And then the left hand just Seven. This is root seven. 
seven three, right? A sharp is the three seven. Like the E 
flat blues scale. Um, and if you're really looking, you'd be like, ah, does the E flat blues scale really work with each of those chords? Um, and you say, well, it doesn't really work with that G7. It's got the major seven in there with the F sharp. Um, but, you know, you pound something away, you believe in it, you hammer it home, and it sounds okay. It's a <laughs> you know, Monk would be the other big inspiration here, and Monk would certainly be totally fine with putting the major seventh against the dominant seventh.